Hello, my soccer universe. Reviewing the leagues in England and the Netherlands, and we have breaking news already with Frank Lampard being sacked, which just came in now. Uh, which on one side is a little bit weird because it came after a win on the other side. The writing was so on the wall, and also his behavior uh, as of late in interviews, not protecting his players any, any, anymore. It really seemed like the end of the line. Although I never, never will support unless he cannot reach the team, but I don't think this was really the case. I think it was a bad spell for Lampard. Uh, and you know, the, uh, Sarri had something similar and then they uh, finished their season well. I think the squad is talented enough. So I'm not saying I will never uh, support by general to not support sacking a manager mid-season. And now the rumor is that uh, Tuchel is coming in. Yeah. <laughs> I guess with two German players, you need a German coach in there to uh, make them run, I guess. <sighs> I'm not sure if Tuchel is the right person for Chelsea, to be honest. I thought maybe an Allegri type might suit them better to make shut up shop behind there, but yeah. Let's see, Tuchel at least is an exciting coach, uh, but I thought Tuchel might actually be better suited for a job in Germany itself. Well, what are the other news? Um, the Manchester teams had a great week, uh, especially United, who not only defended first place, but also won a big one in the FA Cup against Liverpool. Uh, the City, I think, looks more and more like the team to beat. And uh, I have the feeling it's a little bit like Bayern was a month ago. Now it comes the time when then City will just and uh, off we go. And we really have to ask ourselves, are uh, Liverpool already out of two competitions, two, two domestic competitions, yeah, out of the, yeah, the FA Cup, um, yeah, I mean the League Cup, I, I don't count, and is it already time for them to say goodbye to the Premier League? We'll have to see. In the Netherlands, uh, we had a great game between Feyenoord and AZ, and other than that, I think the top teams are wearing Ajax, and it's an old Ajax jersey. I will spring it. I will take three weeks that I can spring a new Ajax jersey surprise upon you. Teasing you a little bit there. I would say let's jump into the games, uh, especially in what happened in the midweek. Uh, I only saw highlights. I I just couldn't, <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, I mean, the big uh, result from Tuesday was definitely Leicester City beating Chelsea and comfortably so. Yes, um, with some luck, Chelsea maybe could have gotten a win or something out there, but uh, overall the way Leicester played was so superior to what Chelsea was showing that it's, it's an actual joy, a joy to watch and I really hope that Leicester doesn't fall away like last season because uh, they are really exciting teams and a uh, team in there and I, I really wish for them to finish in the top four. And Didi and especially Madison with a nice goal uh, already before they have. Um, Timo Werner had a good goal, uh, had had a goal, um, uh, did this out uh, rightfully for offside, but you know, was never, was never really deserved in Chelsea would have gotten anything out of that one. Uh, then we have to jump on Wednesday, we have to jump to the makeup game first to round one, which was between Manchester City and Villa, which probably was the most entertaining uh, game of all these uh, games in the midweek. A game that only had two goals that came late when there should have been many, many goals throughout. Um, City dominated the first half, but then Villa came out, had uh, plenty of um, opportunities to also score themselves. In the end, it is a it's at least, in, from what I get from the English media, a contentious uh, goal for Bernardo Silva in the late that settles it uh, because Rodri came from an offside position but Tyro Minx clearly controls the ball at that moment new phase of play I don't find it contentious I think this is all right I don't think that any system is broken here uh, then Dean Smith of course uh, cannot contain himself he's against Sainz and often very late Gündogan Gündo decides the game with a penalty but you know uh, fully it was a great game but I think City really deserved to win this one as well. Uh, and then we go back to round 18, where uh, United then defend their uh, first 
uh, place because the city temporarily took it over. Lukman gives Fulham the lead, but Cavani in the 21st gets it back, and then uh, Pogba with a really great goal in the 65th settles the win for you. For United, it was not pretty, but you get it. That's all that you need for now. And then the big shocker came on Thursday with Liverpool falling to an Ashley Barnes penalty uh, in the 83rd minute. Uh, Liverpool really not looking like themselves, uh, especially the front three uh, being rather poor in the previous games and here as well. And uh, the big question, of course, was asked already, why? What's happening? Why is, why is it not looking good? I think it has a lot to do with tiredness and all the intense style that Klopp is playing and I already saw the wheels coming off, you know, starting when they lost, lost to Watford or, or, or already and then in the Champions League and they never really looked that right in the, after the Corona break as well, they just had such a big lead that they just had to sail home for the championship. They had some great showings early in the season but I think everything's uh, keeping up with them and to be honest, all the misses, especially Van Dijk in the defense. You know, I think there is good reason that Liverpool is not having the greatest of seasons. And the question is, will City still hit that bump or will it continue? Uh, the way we have to see. The roll is tight. And then actually it all finished up in the Premier League with another uh, game on Saturday between Villa and Newcastle, where Villa got a 2-0 win, only Botkins and Torare, so losing one, win, winning one, but at least Aston Villa is catching up in the standings, which we can see now. Uh, Villa is now in eighth uh, point, still two games uh, behind. Uh, United and City are on top, but uh, City has, has a game in hand, at least in, uh, less than Liverpool. But you see Spurs and Everton are looming, so uh, we will have to adjust soon. But before that, let's look at the chances. I mean, it gets very, very firm for Manchester City at the moment uh, to make it, to become champions. United is given outside chance and uh, Liverpool is down to 6%. I think we can call it for... United and also on the bottom. The bottom two are clear and then it's really, uh, yeah, Newcastle is, is moving in there worryingly so, but uh, they really don't look good. Uh, as for the Champions League spots, um, United City, Liverpool still in there. Leicester, maybe Spurs, maybe Chelsea. Chelsea has a really good rating, but not to lose. But let's adjust the table and we see that actually Manchester City is top if we do that. And even Everton goes past Liverpool. Liverpool at the moment, given their average number of points per game, are only in sixth place. That's pretty bad looking. And Chelsea in tenth. So really, really not good for them. Uh, but for the expected standings, and this is the most interesting one, is now we have clearly City ahead of United and then Liverpool. Um, that uh, last time United Liverpool were just level, and but now it's really the gap opens up even further. And if you look at the chances, I mean, Manchester City is firmly on first place with United having a good grip on second place already. And Liverpool, Liverpool, yeah, third, fourth, some, some, some of the and then it's Leicester and Spurs a little bit with the outside looking in. Chelsea could go to European sports, and then we have a broad field from Aston Villa to rather Southampton. And those are the top teams. Those are the teams that could en end up in Europe. The rest breaks off. And we see already relegations at the moment only. Two were raised between Newcastle and Fulham of who will stay up. Uh, we have a midweek round where um, the, the actually two interesting ones. Everton, who seemingly hasn't played in forever, Plays at home to Leicester on Wednesday and then Spurs against Liverpool on Thursday. I think those are two very interesting matchups. We have a Southampton Arsenal matchup, which is a repeat. From, we'll talk of, you know, about the FA Cup in a little bit. That's, uh, I think, a big one. The two Manchester teams have actually rather easy draws with the with playing against the two bottom teams. FA, uh, we have also the. Mm -hmm. uh, the weekend round, the standard ties Arsenal United. Uh, which looks a lot more interesting now than it looked a little bit uh, ago. West Ham against Liverpool. I um, think this looks like a must win for Liverpool. Uh, let's see the um, City against Sheffield United. So City will 
keep on the rank up points. I think a sleeper game is definitely Southampton against Aston Villa since both teams are playing rather exciting. So, FA Cup, I saw highlights from three games. Uh, the first one, of course, Southampton against Arsenal, where Southampton probably deservedly won, uh, but it was in the end an own goal. Uh, in the 2024, I mean, it was a slight, slight deflection, but the uh, shot would have gone out to give Southampton the overall deserved win from what I could get uh, from the highlights. Um, we had, uh, so it, is, it is of course on, on selections, uh, Swansea 5 1 over Nottingham. Uh, Barnsley is interesting because the, uh, not only uh, the former last coach, Valerian Ismail, is playing there, but also the former last player from last, last season. So that's interesting. They played Norwich and uh, move on. Uh, City not really trouble against Cheltenham. Chelsea also moving past Luton Town. Leicester against Brentford. This was a, a match that I would have liked to watch because I really think that Brentford is a good team. <laughs> but Leicester in the end got it. Uh, United against Liverpool. That was a great game. I did not see much of the first half because I had the last game on it at the same time, but I could see that Liverpool actually looked over a whole lot better. And I mean, the way Firmino sets up Salah for the first goal and the way Salah converts was really, really, really sweet. However, United were able to launch a counter-attacks and as good as Liverpool looked going forward. I mean, having finally uh, hit the net uh, again after, uh, I think, four or five games, some, 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 something like that. On the back, they looked very, very, very shaky. I mean, on the first goal, Rashford makes a big uh, cross uh, across the field to Greenwood that uh, Milner completely misjudges. Greenwood can make it 1-1. And right after the half, it's Greenwood who plays a ball to Rashford, where young Williams also, I mean, tries to do some, something fancy, misjudges the ball and allows Rashford to go clear on goal um, and make it 2-1. And this is the danger with United at this moment, that uh, this is a side that if they are given chances, they're actually converting them. They're not wasting many, many chances, which is a really good sign if you're a United fan. And uh, in addition, actually staying solid on the back, which is something we also didn't see all, all that much. However, Liverpool came back. Milner missed a huge one. Then um, he kind of helped set up Salah. I mean, it was a Firmino assist, but the way Mil uh, Milner steps over allows Salah uh, to e equalize. I think that Salah had another chance and it really looked to me like that Liverpool actually might pull this out. Bruno Fernandes come on for Donny van der Beek. I don't know what they are doing with van der Beek, to be honest, uh, because that is a great player, but he doesn't really fit to United. But yeah, they get a free kick and Bruno Fernandes uh, whips it uh, on the side of the wall over Thiago's head. I mean, Thiago is not tall, but, you know, if he would have jumped, he might have gotten it. And I have to say, although it was really in the corner, it was a great shot. You're the goalkeeper. This is your corner. You should have that one. But, yeah, United hangs on. They even hit the bar then once, or the, or the, the woodwork at least, once. And overall, I have to say, for a clinically good performance, United deserved that win. Um, and then I just finished watching Wickham uh, against uh, Spurs, where actually, actually Wickham took a lead, but Gareth Bale could equalize just before the half. Then it was more like a siege uh, uh, for on the Wickham goal, but it really did not happen much until uh, Son comes on and Dombele Congo comes on and then Harry Winks in the 86th and Dombele assisted uh, by Son in the 87th and then Dombele himself in stoppage time. Clear the game and so uh, Spurs move on as well. We'll talk about the draw. I didn't have the time now to look at it uh, when it comes time. Let's move to the Netherlands where we also had a cup round. Uh, the standard tie was clearly Ajax beating AZ away from home. Uh, we also have Feyenoord moving on against Heracles and PSV against Volendam. Uh, Vitesse beating Den Haag. So quite kind of, kind of interesting. I also have seen the draw, but I don't have the dates yet, but I know that Ajax is playing at home to, at, against PSV in the quarters, which is the most exciting matchup in there. And I guess everyone is hoping that Feyenoord will come in the final and then one of those two, and we have a big final in the Netherlands. As for the round itself, I saw the highlights of, of the last game, but uh, let's uh, first go Vitesse against Groningen. Uh, that was, was an interesting game that Vitesse won. PSV uh, beats Walwijk, Ajax gets a win at Sittard. And then Feyenoord against AZ was an actually quite a lively game. Um, 
where uh, at that thrice took the lead, that twice could be equalized. Uh, I mean, the goal by Carson was already very well played. Then uh, the equalized by Jorgensen was a little bit of a messy defending. Uh, right after, after the half, Boadou can make it 2-1. Two, two then again, a little bit uh, shaky defending on the side allows Feno to come back in the 58th. And then uh, Stang's assist uh, makes Boadou slam it home in the 70th to give Alkma actually a good lead. And then uh, in stoppage time, Kopmanus uh, misses a penalty, but uh, was all ready done for AZ in the uh, great game, to be honest. And AZ now goes ahead of Feyenoord. Uh, the top three, those stay the same. And Ajax is firm, firm, firm favorite to win the title there. And uh, in the expected standings, you can see, I mean, Ajax then, a long distance and it's PSV that will probably finish ahead of uh, Vitesse now and AZ and Fair is only in fifth spot although this might uh, change and then there's a clear cut I think it's the top five but you know they have this uh, special round for the European spots. Uh, the next round is a midweek round uh, again uh, with the big well, that's not really a big matchup. <laughs> I mean, AZ against Utrecht probably. Fenlo plays against Vitesse, Emmen against PSV, uh, Herrenveen against uh, Feyenoord, and Ajax plays against Willem Dwe. And then on the weekend, uh, we get the big one, AZ against Ajax. That's pretty much a must watch. And then they have Feyenoord against uh, PSV ahead of that too. So, hmm, that sounds very, very uh, interesting. So great round coming up in, in the night. Now the girl that keep this in my head. Anyway, let me let me know what you thought about all the games in the uh, in England Netherlands uh, this past week. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!